and and for for a damn good reason. And I think it's because she's such a great organizer. Um, recently, I started working as a, a freelance doc filmmaker, and I, I come from an organizing background, so I'm really skeptical of people who make films about my people. And uh, Michael just had this kind of genuine, earnest energy that I really appreciated and, uh, and really made me trust that the relationships that she was building and these small black communities were the types of relationships that last and the types of relationships that build power and the types of relationships that will bring these uh, petrochemical plants down. So give it up for Michael, y'all. And Michael has brought together this wonderful panel. And um, all of those mics, also, if, if some volunteers could help us get these mics to these folks, are right there. And um, Michael has brought together this wonderful panel for Louisiana Just Recovery Network. All these folks are members of Louisiana Justice, uh, Louisiana Just Recovery Network, and um, I'm gonna let I'm gonna do a little bit of an intro, but I'm mostly gonna let Michael do it. Tonight speaking, we have Melissa Bright. If you could raise your hand, Melissa. Um, <laughs> Melissa's parents' home was one of the first whole home rebuilds um, by Louisiana Just Recovery Network. Next, we have Toy Carter, raise your hand, who was a field producer on their last film, y'all. A native of the Mississippi Gulf Coast, a long-term climate organizer, and co-founder of Louisiana Just Recovery. Dominic Kruger, who you also saw in the last film, is a former plant worker and a member of Louisiana Just Recovery. Dominic, raise your hand. Right. And we have Pastor Gregory Manny, a co-founder of Louisiana Just Recovery Network. He is also the leader of the Coalition Against Death Alley and the Greater New Orleans Interfaith Climate Coalition. He's also a moderator of Justice and Beyond and serves as the pastor of Broadmoor Community Church in New Orleans. You're doing a lot, Pastor Manning, he's got to say, you're doing a lot. Um, and last, we have Robert Taylor, who's a community leader and president of the Concerned Citizens of St. John the Baptist Parish. So I want to say thank you all so much for coming. We really appreciate it, and I'm going to pass it over to Michael. Great. Thank you all so much. This is very fun and exciting and very new. Okay, so we we have 20 minutes for the panel, so we're going to cut things down a little short. I know I sent all the panelists our questions, but we're going to actually change things up a little bit, and everybody is going to answer this one question. And uh, the one question that I have for y'all, and we're gonna start with Mr. Bobby and we'll just go down the line. But the one question that I have for y'all is, you know what, the work that we do is hard. We're fighting for communities, we're fighting for our own people, and we're not just fighting for Louisiana people, we're fighting for the rest of the planet because Louisiana is ground zero right now for fossil fuel build out, right? So we're not just fighting for our own communities, we're fighting for the whole planet, the United States and everything beyond that. And so the question that I have for each of our panelists is, what keeps you motivated to stay in this fight? It's a long fight. We're building on the work of people that came from generations before us. So what keeps you motivated to stay in this fight? What are some of the victories that you can point to that keep you motivated? And so Mr. Bobby, I would love it to pass it over to you and you can just pass it out down the line. All right, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for having me down. Uh, I have a, a great grandson that just made a year old. A great grandson. Uh, we do live in Cancer Alley, next, next to the uh, Dangle facility. And, uh, they, they emit a chemical called chloroprene, that's a ceramic, it's a known a mutagen that mutates the DNA in the people that are exposed to it. EPA has set a level of exposure for humans to that particular uh, chemical. It's a 0 0.2 microgram per cubic liter over 
a 70 year period for, for humans. And I have recently discovered that children now, by the time they are two years old, have exceeded that 70 year limit of exposure to this deadly chemical. And if you ask me what will continue to drive me, uh, that that is a nightmare for us living under the threat of that. We have experienced a few in terms of our continuing cycle. Thank you. Well, it's, uh, it's an honor to be here, first of all, and, and thank you all for coming out. I continue to do this work because of my faith and hope and love. And I just believe that our world can change and will change and is changing. And I do it for the sake of our children. That, you know, we, we, we Mr. Bobby knows that when we march together, we've carried this sign called Grandma and the Baby. It's a picture of a little old grandma sitting on her shotgun porch in the River Parishes, could be St. John or St. James, and she's sitting on that porch holding a little baby and got a beautiful house, but behind that house is a bad neighbor that's moved in, and that bad neighbor is a huge looming petrochemical industry that's threatening the life of her child and her not allowing that child to thrive. Uh, and so I believe that every child should have the opportunity not only to live, but to thrive. And as a pastor, I believe that no pastor is worth his salt if he is not standing up for humanity and all of God's creation, including God's children. And so we have to do that, we must do that, we must do what we can to love God and to love our neighbor. And, and, and what gives me hope is the fact that we are winning. Uh, the powers that be may want to make us think that we're not winning, but we are winning. That we are more powerful than they think that we are. And the reason why we founded Louisiana Just Recovery Network is that last word, network. And we are growing our network right now as we speak. We're growing because you are listening because you will go back and tell somebody else because you are now an advocate who will stand on the front line with us and so that makes us warriors and we are going to and will and have won and will continue to win against some very bad despicable hateful giants that are called the petrochemical industry truly grateful that we are here to assist them 
when a parish leaders are not. That brings me great joy that they adopt me into their families. enjoy doing what I'm doing. I do enjoy learning. You're never too old, old to learn. Um, I had this prepared, but I don't know where it went at, but I am just grateful to be here and speaking among you. So I'm just thankful you have me. Hello. What motivates me is being able to help people and to know that I'm doing more good than harm. I spent a lot of my life doing a lot of harm, making a lot of chemicals that shouldn't be nowhere on this earth. So. Just trying to make up for that and just to be able to help people and see them come back home is just my number one goal. I want to see people come back home that have been gone for years out their house because the government don't care. I just want to see people happy and back in their communities where they belong, where they're trying to push us out. And it's just a blessing to be there when they get that key and they turn it and they back. They're back home. You know, that's what I fight for. Um, hi, thanks for having us. And thank you, Michael, for the beautiful filming and for bringing us all together here tonight. Jazz as well. <laughs> um, what better? me is uh, everybody up here a lot of y'all um, who I know out here tonight um, being together with other people finding collective solutions to take care of each other figuring out how we're gonna do that in the face of climate crisis and um, and then as everyone else has almost said you know figuring out ways to pass that down to the next generation because we know that things are gonna get harder and harder so, but I believe it's in our DNA as human beings to take care of each other. We might have unlearned it a little bit in these past couple hundred years, but, or longer. Um, but I believe we can relearn it and learn new ways that can, at the same time, be liberating and freeing for us all. So that's what motivates me. Well, I want to thank you all. And before we end our panel discussion, because I know we have some wonderful, amazing musicians that are going to perform, um, I also want to just acknowledge Zen, Jazz, and Zach, who uh, helped make these videos. So Zen, Jazz, and, and Zach, if you would be willing to just stand up wherever you are. <laughs> There's Zach right there, and there's Zach right there, and I don't know where Jazz is, but uh, it takes a whole team to do anything. We can't accomplish anything to, uh, on our own as individuals. It takes a whole crew of folks holding things down to make things work. So thank you all so much for your work um, in making these videos happen, and thank you to everyone on this panel. Um, and I, I'm going to close it out, I think, because we have some musicians that need to perform. We all need to see them. But the only thing that I will say is that, you know, climate change seems big, it seems very scary, and it seems very difficult to know how you can get plugged in. Um, and there's a reason for that. It's because people don't actually want us to start thinking about what nature means, what it means to be a community, what it means um, to have justice in our communities. And we're changing that. And you all are a part of that. In political things, it can be difficult sometimes to want to volunteer and get organized because all of us are just fighting to pay our rent, to pay our like Netflix bill, to put food on the table for our families. And so it can be difficult to want to come out and volunteer and do a bunch of extra stuff on top of what you already have to deal with. But what I would tell you is that we need everybody. We need everybody. 
And if everybody does a little, it amounts to a lot. And so I hear Pastor Manning, and you know what? This is the man who can really throw it down for the whole climate movement and can tee everything up. And so what I would say, <laughs> as we close out this whole panel discussion, I want to just pass it, pass it over to Pastor Manning for whatever words you want to share with the crowd. <laughs> We've got work to do, but we can do it. I mean, lean into love, lean into compassion, lean into service. We only got one life to live, and that life is short. And I want you to think about the fact that we've been given stewardship and the opportunity to care for this earth for this appointed time. And all of us in this space, we get to do life together. We could have been born at any other time. I could have never met you. But we are in this place for a reason and for a purpose. And that pur purpose is to walk in solidarity, walk in love, walk hand in hand, and get beyond the hate and the vitriol that we see in this life and transform the world by the power that is within each and every one of us. Don't ever underestimate your voice. Don't ever as to underestimate your power and the authority that you've been assigned to for this brief moment upon this earth. Keep going. We can make a better day for us all. Keep going. Okay, y'all, give another round of applause for our panelists. Thank y'all so much. All right, thank you so much for coming. This is the first step. I'm going to pull you into so much more. We're going to fight this climate change beast and we're going to win. So thank you. Woo!